Hello everyone. Uh, this is Dr. Shijun Wang. Uh, today's video, I am going to finish the tutorial of Chopin's second scherzo, Opus 31. Uh, this is the fourth tutorial that I made specifically for this piece. And this is probably one of the most detailed tutorial I've ever made. I've walked through every single measure on musical ideas and also technical problems. So now we are going to wrap up and start from the last time this theme appears. Okay. And we had for now three times. And I would say Chopin probably uh, did not change much, rather, I would say 95% to 98% of these uh, sections stays the same, exactly the same. But only the last time, it's no longer a short note, it's a long note. So I guess that adds a different mood or a, a, we can imagine something a little bit different, right? A little different attitude instead of but that somehow to me um, that prolonged notes that you're holding for two uh, two measures somehow makes the question mark even sounds more doubtful. Okay, so just do something special on that. The third time is a charm. Uh, make something different out of that. And of course, this whole thing. Yeah, as long as it is, uh, if this was Schubert, he would probably do it in a different key, but to copy the entire thing, right? Uh, Beethoven, of course, develops a piece from maybe two notes, maybe three notes, but from a, what we call a motive. But then Schubert develops something. It's already a complete melody, so he could only transpose it, right? That's why his sonatas or his symphonies are so long. He's not changing two measures, he's changing maybe 20 to 50 measures. Um, and here, um, Chopin just exactly copied everything, but with some room for us to do something interesting or something uh, different. Yeah, I, I find when this melody split into two halves, into two uh, notes, into uh, octaves, uh, here we can either choose to emphasize the top. And, and this peculiar uh, that he put a road chord, and we know octave, right? If you can't reach an octave, you probably uh, <laughs> are not old enough or, or piano will be too hard for you, right? But why roll, rolling an octave chord? I think maybe he's thinking, you know, a lot of times when the composer writes roll chord, it's not because physically you can't reach it. It's because he is trying to help us with special treatment on voicing. So this, made it easier to emphasize the top, but also it makes it easier to emphasize the lower note. So, of course, we can choose to, to do it differently the third time, or even the second time this thing appears. Yeah? So bring a different voice, bring a separate voice. Um, not to surprise people, but to to show the differences of, of voicing. Um, and the real change comes in uh, on measure 697. Um, before... Especially on this moment, we are having... A octave leap, right? To have this very heroic feeling. But this time. No, 
you're going to diminish. And you're going to crawl up, no octave leaps. Right, but this really doesn't start right on measure 697. It started five measures before that. Yeah, you have this uh, crescendo that lasts for how many measures? Uh, 16 measures. So a, a big job with 16 measure long crescendo. The biggest challenge is to keep it quiet long enough. Okay, so I guess here we should already sense something special coming, something different. So uh, hold this longer because this is no longer a crescendo for five, five measures. Right? This is a crescendo, the beginning of a crescendo, uh, a 16 measure crescendo. So For a sensitive audience, if they heard this the first time, they should already send something special coming from this moment, not five measures later. Oh, ha, huh, that confirms their doubt. of a sharp key yeah this is quite a abrupt interruption um, the left hand I, I know there's slurs over but I do feel uh, it's two different characters this is the mean character yeah, this is slightly milder here yeah, this part is probably one of the hardest part in this whole piece and I've heard actually a lot of people <laughs> messing up or playing it messy um, two things that I suggest number one keep it quiet as long as you can it's another long crescendo right it lasts for seven measures um, and left hand bass is quite low and it has octaves. Um, so if we start with pounding these, nobody would ever hear a crescendo. And if you're just pounding seven measures in a row, we will lose the interest probably by the third measure. So really crucial to keep it quiet. And also to make this, this left hand two note slur a uh, one single hand or arm movement, right? I've heard different people saying the same thing, but from different angle, from different ways. Someone says down, up. Yeah, that's the most common, down, up. And someone says yin, out, yin and out. Yeah. And I've used the um, check mark uh, example. So almost like you're writing a check mark, but you're really not separating them into two motion, but one. Okay, so which means the last one really is not uh, significant enough for a separate bow. Yeah. And also constantly keep it moving. If you stop moving, then you have to, like a car, you have to take longer and more energy to let it move again. So I, I guess for here, I would argue um, left hand is constantly drawing a circle. Yeah, drawing a circle. And even when I'm playing this note, my arm never cease to move, never, like never to linger or to stop on that note. For the right hand, um, this hand position, right? Of course, you need to learn how to get to the next hand position very quickly, but also again, like this, if you locate 
the new hand position with your second finger. It will really help you to find the rest. Okay, don't find the next note. Find the next position that takes care of more than one note. And here, I, I think really the spirit of this part comes from right, this very contrasting. But however, here we see a, a line here on the first note. quiet and a little slower again left hand just like I think it's two different uh, characters and here marcato legato of course is hard and after 11 minutes of playing this and it's already getting to the point that you're tired but you're emotionally excited and how can you keep a very cool head and to aim this um, but first of all we can never split our eyeballs right one takes care of the left and one takes care of the right hand um, and it's too risky to play without looking <laughs> Um, so my way is I aim my left hand first, but then after I know where my left hand, hand uh, note is, I aim for the right hand. So you might see me doing this very quickly, but then I'm really aiming both just very, very quickly to aim the left hand and then have all the tension on, on the top because if I were to choose uh, which one is more important I guess this <laughs> really <laughs> is unsettling so I would rather have a quick look and then and also left hand has an octave so you have two fingers to find this position but then this is just one so I guess it's more risky okay so um, this is really this whole series is a new experiment uh, I guess for, for each version, and I usually upload two, one in Chinese, my native tongue, uh, one in English, but I think in each language I spend at least an hour on this piece. And, and I really like this new format. I think it helps the students to watch it while they practice, rather uh, most of the suggestions I pro provide are really to help you to practice. So the, my next project uh, would be the four ballads and summer is approaching and I will have more time to spend on my own learning, my own studying and practicing. So I will in very recent times uh, start working on Chopin's first ballad and then number four, the two hard ones, and then I will write them up with number three and number two. Again, if you have questions regarding to these pieces, don't hesitate to contact me or to leave your message or to reply uh, under this video for your feedbacks. And if you want me to comment on your playing, uh, don't hesitate to email me your short clips. Then um, in the near future, I will be making a uh, a video uh, commenting or helping on the uh, videos that I've received from my viewer. Thank you again for watching and for your continuous uh, support on my video. Um, your comments, your views and your discussion are the reason I kept doing this and it means a lot uh, for me to hear your uh, suggestions and comments. Uh, I will see you next week. Uh, thank you. For